Hey, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at trigonometric symmetry properties. Okay, so there's a fair few identities that we're going to go through to start us off with. Okay, so we've got our basic definitions of sine, cos, and tan. That should all just be revision for maths you've done in previous years. So sine is offset over, over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is offset over the... Also, that should be adjacent, not hypotenuse. Sorry about that. Okay. Tan of theta is also equal to sine of theta divided by cos of theta. And sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So just with these ones, remember this is the equivalent of saying... Okay, that we've got sine of theta all squared. Okay, It's different to saying that. Okay, These are not the same, nor are these the same. Okay, this means it was squared theta. These two mean that it's sine theta times sine theta. Okay? Got a couple other things for some negative angles. So cos of negative theta is equal to positive cos of theta. Okay, sine of negative theta equals negative sine of theta. And tan of negative theta is equal to negative tan of theta. Okay, there's also some work on complementary angles. Okay, and that's uh, cos of pi on 2 minus theta is the same as sine of theta. Sine of pi on 2 minus theta is the same as cos of theta. And tan of pi on 2 minus theta is 1 on tan of theta. Okay, cos of pi on 2 plus theta is equal to negative sine of theta. Sine of pi on 2 plus theta equals cos of theta. And tan of pi on 2 plus theta equals negative tan of theta. Okay, cos of 3 pi on 2 plus theta is sine of theta. Okay, sine of 3 pi on 2 plus theta is equal to negative um, cos of theta and tan of 3 pi on 2 is equal to negative tan theta. Okay. Um, so there's one last uh, one group that I haven't put in yet, which is uh, cos of 2 pi minus theta is equal to cos of theta. Sine of 2 pi minus theta is equal to negative sine of theta. And tan of 2 pi minus theta is equal to negative tan theta. That's the other group as well. Okay. So, we'll flip over and just have a look at an example. Okay. So, we've got if sine of theta equals root 3 on 2, okay, and cos of alpha is equal to 4 on 5, okay, and we're saying that uh, theta and alpha are in the first quadrant, okay, we'll get to that in a minute with what that means exactly, then we've got to find the values of sine of pi plus theta, okay, to start off with. Okay, so if we look, uh, so if we look at that one, okay, so sine of pi plus theta means that we are in the third quadrant, trans sine is negative. Okay, so this is the same as negative sine of theta. Okay, um, so what I might do is actually I might just jump forward a second and then come back to this work example. So I'll have a look at some exact values now. Okay, so our exact values can be remembered in one of two different ways. Okay, uh, our triangles here or our table, which I've also extended on. So our triangles and this much of the table uh, tell the same thing. I've just uh, extended a little bit. So basically, we've got our triangle where we've got pi on 4 in both of our non-right angle um, spots. Okay, or 45 degrees. So remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so sine of pi on 4 would be 1 over root 2, okay, which if we have a look here, sine of pi on 4 is 1 over root 2, or root 2 over 2. Uh, it's better to rationalise our denominator, which means we end up with root 2 on 2. Okay, uh, for our other triangle, for example, we've got uh, pi on 3 and pi on 6, okay, and our side lengths are 1, root 3 and 2. So if we wanted, say, uh, cos of pi on 3, well that's adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's going to be 1 on 2. 
or we want it cos of pi on 6, well that would be adjacent, which is now root 3 on 2, which we find we get that as well. Okay, I've also put in uh, what we get for pi on 2, pi on 3, pi on 2. Okay, so that's going around here. Because the thing to remember, okay, is that cos of theta equals x and sine of theta equals y for our unit circle, which I'll explain in a second. Okay, so we just find some solutions there for those ones. Okay, so our unit circle, right, looks like this. Okay, so the idea is that we've got a circle, okay, whose radius is 1. So the coordinates at this point here are going to be 1, 0. This one here will be 0, 1. Here will be negative 1, 0. And here is 0, negative 1. Okay. So, cos of x, uh, sorry, cos of theta is our x coordinate, sine of theta is our y coordinate. So when we look at pi on 2, okay, so our x value is our cos of theta, so pi on 2 cos is 0, and uh, for sine of theta, it's equal to 1, okay? We've got our first, second, third, and fourth quadrant, okay, and we also have this acronym CAST. Okay, or some people like to remember it as all stations to Croydon, okay, or I mean for us locals down here too, or all stations to Camperdown. Okay, just what it tells us is which of our trig functions are positive and which quadrant. So for our first quadrant, where A, or all okay, of our trig functions are positive in this quadrant. Okay, in the second quadrant, only sine's positive, okay, cos and tan will be negative. Third quadrant, but T is so only tan's positive, the others will be negative, and similarly in the fourth quadrant, we've got C, so cos is positive, the rest are negative. Okay, our angle measured in our first quadrant is called our basic angle or our reference angle. Okay, our angle in our second quadrant is found by going pi minus theta or pi minus our basic or reference angle. In our third quadrant, it's pi plus our angle theta. Okay, and in the fourth quadrant, it's two pi minus our basic angle theta. Okay, so uh, that will help with the uh, example we we're just looking at. Sorry, so we'll just flip back. Okay, there's not too much more to look at, to be honest. Okay, so the other thing that we we're looking at was uh, the next one was cos of negative alpha. Okay, we know that cos of negative alpha equals cos of positive alpha. That was one of our identities. So therefore, we're still going to equal four and five. Um, we also had. Uh, tan of theta that we need to find. Remember, tan is equal to sine over cos. Okay, so that means it's going to be root 3 on 2 over 4 on 5. Okay, which means we're going to be root 3 on 2 times by 5 on 4. So it's going to be 5 root 3 on 8. Okay, for that one. Okay, um, so we'll keep moving on and we'll just look at, um, we've got one more work example to have a quick look at. Okay, so we want to give the exact values of a few different ones. So we want the exact value of cos of 2 pi on 3. Okay, we need to think, okay, well where's 2 pi on 3? Okay, well it's going to actually be, if we have a look here, this is pi on 2. This is pi, so 2 pi on 3 is going to be in our second quadrant. Okay, which means our angle 2 pi on 3 has been found by going pi minus some value theta. Okay, so we see that's got to be cos of pi minus pi on 3. Okay, uh, cos is going to be negative in our second quadrant. So just think of this as cos of pi on 3. Okay, which when we look at our basic angle, pi on 3, cos is a half. So we know that's going to equal a half, but because we're in our second quadrant, it's going to be negative a half. Okay, so we've got to identify what our basic angle is, by which quadrant we're in, look up our exact value table, and then give it the appropriate sign. So we'll look at one other one. Uh, we'll go, say, 10 of 7 pi on 4. Okay, we 
in there and think, okay, well, where is 7 pi on 4? If we have a look at our um, unit circle, 7 pi on 4 is going to be in our fourth quadrant. 10 is going to be negative. Okay, and we find our angle there. Well, I want to say that is 2 pi minus theta. Okay, it's got to get us to 7 pi on 4. So that's going to be 10 of 2 pi minus pi on 4. Okay, so really we're looking at 10 of pi on 4, but we know the answer has to be negative because we're in the fourth quadrant. 10 of pi on 4 is 1, so that's going to equal negative 1. Okay. We'll just look at one other one, okay, which is uh, sine of 11 pi on 3. Because right. you can see there, we've actually gone past 2 pi. Okay, so really we can think of that, okay, to start off with and go, okay, well, 2 pi is going to be 6 on 3. So if we ignore that, then we're left with 5 pi on 3. Because basically, at 6 pi on 3, what's happened, okay, is we've gone all the way around, okay, 6 pi on 3, and then we've got another 5 pi on 3. Okay, we've gone around another 5 pi on 3. Okay, so we've almost gone all the way around again. Okay, so we're going to be over in our fourth quadrant. Okay, so we're going to be over in our fourth quadrant. So you think of this as sine of 2 pi minus theta to give us our 5 pi on 3. So we can really think of that as sine of pi on 3. Okay, have a look at the exact values. Sine of pi on 3 is root 3 on 2. We're in the fourth quadrant. Sine has to be negative. So it's going to equal negative root 3 on 2. Okay, so that's all I've got for this section. So I know we jump around a little bit and move on to trig now. Okay, but hopefully that's enough to get you through the questions on this section.